Hello students, in today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the other techniques or other methods used to generate high voltage DC in high voltage laboratory. In previous lecture, we have discussed the working of the half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier circuits used to generate high voltage DC. So in rectifiers like high voltage rectifier circuits like half wave and full wave rectifiers, the output voltage that we are getting is somewhat lesser than the maximum voltage supplied by the high voltage transformer. As an example, if suppose I am giving 30 kV from the transformer secondary to the half wave rectifier circuit, the expected value at the load side is 30 kV, but instead of 30 kV, we are getting somewhat lower than the 30 kV expected value. The probable uh, reasons for getting a lower potential than the expected one are number one is the voltage drop that could be seen across the diode. Second, the loss of energy that could be observed when the capacitor will transfer its charge to the load circuit. Okay, that would be the uh, second reason. And third is the capacitor acting as a smoothing capacitor which removes the ripple from the produced DC voltage after the conversion from AC. So these are the three possible reasons due to which we will get somewhat lesser voltage as uh, than the expected value. But suppose I have 30 kV of transformer and I need 60 kV DC. Okay, so what could be the uh, possible solution? The possible solution is to use voltage doubler circuit. So voltage doubler circuits are the circuits where you found the series connections of two half wave rectifier circuits. As you know that the single half wave rectifier circuit give us Vmax value. So when I am connecting, when I am connecting the two half wave rectifier circuits in series then it will give me Vmax plus Vmax to Vmax voltage. So that circuit is known as a voltage doubler circuit. Why the name is given as doubler? Because here we are getting a doubling effect to the output voltage. So let me show you the circuit arrangement. It is very simple. Okay, you can see over here, this is a conventional voltage doubler circuit which I have uh, referred from electriccircuit.com. So here you can see that the one part gives me positive voltage and second gives me the negative voltage. So when I connect these two positive and negative circuit arrangement in series, I will get doubling effect. So potential difference between this point and this point are additive in nature. Okay, 25 minus of minus 25 that will give me the 50 volt. So this is a voltage doubler circuit. So circuit arrangement is quite simple. Ideally the two half wave rectifier circuits are connected in cascade. So let us discuss how, how the circuit operates. So here you can see a simple DC voltage doubler circuit is shown. Okay, it is now clear that both the capacitors, capacitor C1 and capacitor C2, okay, and the diodes D1 and D2 
opted together to obtain the double voltage at the output terminals. So let us consider uh, the function of the half wave DC voltage doubler. This is half wave why? Because two half wave rectifier circuits are connected in casket. If I am connecting, if I am connecting two full wave rectifier circuits in casket, then circuit is known as then the circuit is known as a full wave voltage doubler circuits. Okay. So let us consider that this half wave voltage doubler circuit. So during this first half cycle, during this first half cycle, it means let us consider this is point A and this is point B. Okay. So now during the first positive half cycle, you can see that there is a charging of this capacitor C1 to Vmax value. Why? Because the circuit is now closed through this diode D1 during the first positive half cycle or during first half cycle. The D1 will start conducting so acting as a closed switch whereas D2 comes in a reverse bias condition so now it is acting as an open switch. So in this case you can see that this transformer will now not, not supplying load, not supplying the load because D2 is open so this uh, uh, portion okay is this portion is now kept out of the circuit because of non-conducting mode of D2 during the first half cycle. So now your capacitor will now as there is no load is connected the capacitor will charge to the Vmax value okay but now as the wave as the wave is approaching from positive half cycle to the negative half cycle what exactly happens point a becomes negative with respect to point b it means that now the direction of the current is reverse so in this case now d1 comes in a reverse bias condition so this will be now out of the circuit so the potential that we can observe over here the potential that we can observe over here is double how because this is vmax and here the capacitor is also charged with Vmax value. So the potential difference between these two terminals, suppose this is the point C, okay, that is 2 Vmax value. So this potential will now charge this capacitor to a 2 Vmax of voltage. So when the load is not connected, when the load is not connected, the capacitor will remain, uh, will cap its charge to a 2 Vmax value. But as now, when the load is connected, you can see the capacitor will now discharge it means it will transfer its charge okay here you can see this is a discharging phenomena of the capacitor it means that the voltage across capacitor is now reducing as it now delivers to the load when the voltage across capacitor becomes lower than the supply voltage when the voltage across capacitor becomes lower than the supply voltage again the again the previous operation is performed so again it will charge the capacitor to a 2 V max value and then repeated the process. So this is how the doubling voltage is observed when the two half wave rectifiers are connected in series. Okay so during the forward state it will charge the uh, capacitor C1 equal to the peak value of AC secondary voltage. The capacitor is unable to get discharged because here you can see that the D2 during first positive half cycle or during every positive half cycle comes in a reverse bias condition. So this capacitor C1 during this positive half cycles is now unable to get discharged because of the unavailability of the path. So it will remain in a fully charged condition. During the negative half cycle, during the negative half cycle, the diode D2 because this is the direction, so direction of the current. So during negative half cycle, the D2 comes in forward bias condition. So now it is it starts conducting, okay. And the first diode, this D1, will now come in non-conducting state as it is in reverse bias condition. So reverse bias diode D1 will now block discharging of connected C1 
and followed by D2 will allow the charging of capacitor C2. So now if we are applying the KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage low to the outer loop. So this will be your outer loop, okay, because D1 is in a, is in a non-conducting state. Okay, so when we are applying Kirchhoff's voltage low, then the Vs max, now we are considering the negative half cycle, so minus Vs max, here the potential is minus Vs max, minus Vc1 plus Vc2 is equal to 0 as per the Kirchhoff's voltage low. So the uh, voltage available across capacitor C2 will be Vs max plus Vc1. Now Vc1 is tagged with a value of Vs max, so now the voltage available at the capacitor C2 is 2 Vs max. So that is the voltage across capacitor uh, will be equal to the 2 times the peak value of the input transformer's secondary voltage. So the charge transferred by this capacitor C2, okay, we have derived the equation for the charge transferred by the half wave rectifier circuit. Now as two circuits are connected in series, so the charge transformation is also double. So charge which is transferred by this capacitor C2, okay, during its discharging phenomena is 2 C2 delta V. So delta V is equal to I upon 2 F C2, okay, whereas the voltage drop voltage drop that we are assuming uh, from 2V max value is as you know that Q is equal to CV okay so V is equal to Q by C so Q upon C1 that will be the voltage drop that you can observe across the capacitor C1 that is I upon AP C1 so the total mean value of the voltage drop is delta V that is the ripple voltage magnitude plus capital delta V that is the voltage drop across this C1 Okay, so it is I upon F into 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon 2 C2. So this will be the uh, mean value or the average value of the voltage drop that we can see in, uh, in case of this voltage doubler circuit. So as I am increasing the number of stages, ultimately the voltage drop magnitude is also increasing. So as we have discussed voltage doubler circuits, so now let us discuss the voltage multiplier circuit so here you can see i have shown the voltage multiplier circuit okay so on to the left side you can see the circuit arrangement of the voltage multiplier circuit where you can observe the number of uh, voltage doubler circuits okay this is the single stage voltage doubler circuit Okay, which is connected in series with the other voltage doubler circuit. So this voltage multiplier circuits are nothing but they indicates a series connection of number of voltage doubler circuits. So this voltage multiplier circuit was invented by Cockcroft Walton and based on his name the circuit is well known as Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier circuit which is used to generate the higher voltage DC for various applications. So in circuitry you can simply observe the diodes and capacitors ok they only need diodes and capacitors to produce the high voltage DC or to convert the AC into DC. So you can uh, uh, simulate it in your uh, MATLAB platform to understand uh, uh, thoroughly about the influence of the various parameters over the performance of voltage multiplier circuit. On to the right side you can see the waveform over the scope in your MATLAB platform as well. So idea of developing this voltage multiplier circuit is to get the high magnitude of DC voltage from the lower sources. Okay. So if n number of stages are connected then the overall output voltage that we are getting at its output terminal is 2n v max where n represents number of stages. So let us see that how this circuitry operates. Okay. So let us assume that uh, initially this terminal is positive and this terminal is negative. It means that I am representing the 
I am representing the negative half cycle that you can see over here. This is your input voltage supply. Okay, so let us consider first a negative half cycle. So during the first negative half cycle, you can see that the DN does come in forward bias, whereas DN comes in reverse bias condition. Okay, so this will be the direction of the current, so which makes this DN dash in a conduction stage. Okay, so now as it operate as a closed switch, it will charge this capacitor C and dash to the Vmax value. Okay, now as the uh, supply change its phase from negative to positive half cycle. So first we have considered negative half cycle. Now let us consider that there is a reversal of polarity. Okay, so now as the supply change its polarity from negative to positive, in that condition, this D and S, this D and S comes in reverse bias condition. Because now I am assuming this is as a plus terminal and this is as a minus terminal. So now the direction of the current is this. Okay, so now as this is the direction of the current, uh, for this polarity, the DN dash comes in a reverse bias condition and DN comes in forward bias. So it is now acting as a closed switch. So the potential at this terminal and dash will be now Vmax plus the Vmax of C and dash. Okay, the maximum voltage that we can see across the C and dash because it is charged to a value of Vmax. Okay, so now the potential across across this N dash terminal is 2 V max. So this will charge this capacitor to 2 V max value. So this is the operation of the voltage doubler circuit. So this is your first voltage doubler circuit. Now I am connecting the second voltage doubler circuit in series with the first stage. So the potential at this terminal N is 2 V max. So now again you can see that there is a change in the polarity okay during the next phase during the next cycle so now as uh, you can see over here the potential at the point n is 2 v max so during that first positive half cycle the potential of this n minus 1 will becomes 2 v max okay so this capacitor will charge to that potential of 2 V max during the next half cycle during the negative half cycle this D n minus 1 comes in forward bias condition so potential at point n minus 1 potential at point n minus 1 will now becomes as V max at this terminal it is V max the terminal uh, C and dash during positive half cycle charge with voltage of V max okay so V max plus V max that is 2 V max so the potential at n minus 1 is 2 v max plus the c n dash uh, c n minus 1 dash charge with 2 v max so total potential that we could observe at n minus 1 d dash n minus 1 dash is 4 v max so it will charge this capacitor to c n minus 1 to 4 v max so here i am getting 4 v m okay so during each of the positive half cycle i am getting a doubling effect to the voltages okay so uh, uh, this, uh, if I am not connecting the load at this C, uh, at the output terminals of this voltage multiplier circuit, then the capacitors C n, C n minus one, C three, C two, C one will hold up their charges. It means they will now keep their charges, so they will remain in a fully charged condition. But as I am connecting the load, they will discharge or they will release its charge to drive the external load circuit. So this is how in step by step this cockroft voltage voltage multiplier circuits are operating. So the magnitude of ripple voltage in case of voltage multiplier circuits can be calculated from delta V is equal to I upon 2 F C into N of N plus 1 by 2 where N represents the number of stages. C represents the equivalent capacitance offered by the circuit F represents the frequency of supply. The maximum output voltage that we are getting is VO max is equal to 2N V max minus delta V0, where delta V0 represents the voltage drop. And it is calculated from this equation 1 upon FC into 2N3 
1 upon fc into 2n cube by 3 plus n square by 2 minus n by 6. So, from this equation, we can determine the net voltage drop of the circuit. So, this is how this voltage multiplier circuits are operated and produces the high voltage DC. The another equipment is electrostatic generator. So now here we have the two different types of generators. One that is electromagnetic generator, which you have seen in uh, power plants. Okay. And second is the electrostatic generator. So what is the difference between the electromagnetic generator and the electrostatic generator? The electromagnetic generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction whereas the electrostatic generator works on the principle of electrostatics okay so in electromagnetic generators the current carrying conductors are moving against the electromagnetic forces which are acting upon them okay and they will induce the emf okay so you need to recall the uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction for the dynamic machines. In contrast to the electromagnetic generators, the electrostatic generators also convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy directly, but the mode of operation is completely different as compared to the mode of operation that you can observe in case of electromagnetic generators. In electrostatic generators, the electric charges are moving against the force. You can see over here the direction. Okay, the direction of the rotation is against the electrostatic field. So, electric charges here you can see one belt is provided, and the function of this insulating belt is to collect the charge. So, this belt is actually moving, which is rotating against the electrostatic field. Okay. And this principle is obtained to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. So, in electrostatic generators, the electric charges are moved against the force of electric fields, thereby higher potential energy is gained at the cost of mechanical energy. So, this is the basic operating principle of electrostatic generator. So, in your 12th standard, you might have studied about the Van de Graaff generator, which is a type of electrostatic generator okay which is converting the uh, which is uh, used to produce the high voltage dc so let us see this Van de Graaff generator so here you can see uh, this is a Van de Graaff generator okay where you can observe where you can observe the uh, one hollow metallic sphere this is the high voltage electrode number one represents the hollow metal sphere okay second represents the upper comb shape electrode the requirement of this comb shape electrode is to collect the uh, positive uh, to collect the positive charges from the insulating belt okay these three represents upper roller or the upper pulley okay it is generally uh, made up of acrylic glass then four represents the side of the belt which consumes the positive charges 5 represents the other side of the belt which uh, collects uh, which uh, contains the negative charges 6 represents the lower roller which is of metallic material 7 that will represents the lower electrode which is connected to the ground 8 represents this uh, spherical device which uh, collects negative charges from insulating belt and nine number that you can represent it as a spark. So these are the components of the Van de Graaff generator. Now let me show you the uh, working of the Van de Graaff generator. Van de Graaff generator Van de Graaff generator is an electrostatic generator which is capable of producing enormously large static electric potential as high as 20 million volts. It is designed by
by American physicist Robert J. Vandegraaff. It is based on the principle that if a charged conductor is brought internally in contact with the hollow conductor, all the charges from the inner conductor is transferred to the surface of outer conductor, no matter what amount of charge is already present on outer shell. A simple Van de Graaff generator consists of a belt made of rubber running over a pair of rollers, one of which is surrounded by a hollow metallic sphere mounted on an insulated stand. Electrons emitter in the form of comb made up of sharp metal points is positioned near the lower roller in such a way that the comb is pointed towards the rubber belt. The comb is maintained at high positive voltage by external supply. Another comb called receiver comb is positional near the upper roller and is connected to a hollow metal sphere. A motor is connected to a bottom roller in order to move the belt. When the motor is turned on, the belt moves over the pulley. Spray comb positioned near the lower roller which is connected to high positive potential sprays positive charges on the outer side of the belt. Charges on the belt are carried upwards and are collected by the receiver comb on the top of the generator. Since the upper comb is connected to hollow conductor, the charge gets transferred to a halo sphere. Since the belt continuously carries positive charge to the receiver comb, the spherical shell collects enormous amount of charges and develops huge potential. It becomes difficult for the surface to hold more and more charges due to the force of repulsion between the light charges on the dome. When the potential of the spherical shell exceeds the breakdown value of air, air around the sphere gets ionized and leakage of charge takes place from the sphere. Van de Graaff generator produces a beam of high energy particles in the range greater than megavolt. So, this is how the Van de Graaff generator operates. So, as you have seen in video that the charge is spread onto the insulating moving belt from the corona points generally at a potential of 10 to 100 kilovolt above the earth and is removed and collected from the belt connected to the inside of an insulated metallic electrode through which the belt gets moved. So the belt is driven by the electric motor at speed of around 1000 to 2000 minutes per minute. The entire equipment is enclosed in earth metallic tank and filled with insulating gases of good dielectric strength so that the potential of electrode could be raised to a relatively higher voltage without inception of the corona discharges. The shape of High tension electrode should be such that the surface gradient of electric field is made uniform to reduce again the corona discharges. Okay, so when you are designing your Van de Graaff generator, uh, such type of the care you need to take off uh, because if you are uh, if you are generating very high magnitude of potential and suppose you are using the air as a dielectric medium surrounding this. Uh, insulating belt then there might be the chance of the corona inception and as you know that the corona inception is nothing but it it is referred to the power loss okay so electrons are generally lost away uh, from the uh, surface of the insulating belt uh, the charges are lost away from the surface of insulating belt for uh, ionizing the surrounding medium so in that cases you may get the uh, lower potential uh, lower potential than your expected value the second thing is uh, the uh, high tension electrode the 
surface is must be uh, regular if it is irregular then also it assists more amount of corona so corona to develop okay so when you are designing your own vendigrap generator for an application of 5 volt dc generation you need to take care uh, these two thing okay generally uh, the vendigrap generators are uh, known to be the uh, high voltage but low power output devices so uh, to keep the uh, to increase the power output we need to think of to increase the current value okay and the uh, current in vending grab generator uh, uh, current in vending grab generator is substantially low so to uh, raise that potential okay to raise the power output we need to increase the current value as well okay so in case of vending grab generator the current normally depends upon the three factors one is the charge density second is insulating belt width and the velocity of the belt so by uh, by modifying any of the properties you can increase the uh, current level as a result according to p is equal to v into i you can increase the output power of vending grab generator as well so uh, now we have these three parameters one is the charge density second is the belt width and third is velocity of the belt so if uh, the current i is normally given as i is equal to sigma b into v okay i is equal to sigma b into v so you can see that by increasing any of the pair, uh, any of the value you can increase the current as well so if suppose i am increasing the velocity then i can i i cannot see it as a feasible solution because if i increase the velocity of the belt then enormous vibrations may create it okay may create it and this uh, enormous vibration may destroy the insulating belt so it is not a feasible solution to increase the current by increasing velocity of the belt second is a uh, width of the belt so if i am increase the width of the belt of course i can collect the more amount of charges but on to the opposite side by increasing the width of the belt ultimately it increases the weight to the motor through which we are uh, we are uh, driving the belt okay so as the width increases weight of the belt also increases which may create overheating uh, problems to the uh, rotating machines okay so again we cannot find it as a feasible solution so we have only the one parameter through which we can easily increase the value of current and that is to increase the charge density okay so as you can see that charge density sigma sigma is broadly depends upon the relative permittivity of the insulating medium that is uh, that is being used uh, in the used in the metallic enclosure okay so uh, if we are selecting uh, the electronegative gases which have the large value of epsilon r compared to the natural gas then we can increase the value of the current okay so generally if we are considering enclosed metallic structure for this vending grab generator normally the gases of high 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 dielectric strength is uh, is selected okay so that we can maintain the charge as well as we can avoid the inception of the corona discharges so when you are designing your uh, uh, vending grab generator uh, you need to take care of this as well okay the belt width and the velocity being limited by these mechanical reasons so only one feasible solution is now present and that is the charge density so current can be increased by having the higher value of charge density the advantage is of vending grab generator is it has very high voltage okay very high voltage can be generated very easily uh, it gives a ripple free output so it does not uh, require any filtering circuit uh, the precision and flexibility of control is also achieved in case of vending grab generator the disadvantage is low current output but the current can be increased by selecting the uh, gases of high dielectric strength 
and of course uh, belt is uh, belt is driven by the rotating machine so there will always be the problem associated uh, with this business and all so this is all about this uh, winding up generator so uh, we have seen the various techniques used to generate high voltage dc in the high voltage laboratories like uh, half wave and full wave rectifier circuits then we have seen the voltage doubler circuits then we have seen the voltage multiplier circuit then we have seen the electrostatic generator okay so this is the wendy graph generator which produces the high voltage dc for for studying the arc as well as to investigate the as well as to investigate the dc stress performance of the high voltage insulation Thank you.